Insert paper clip. Rex, use your finger. Ah. Okay, now what? Uh, all right, let's see. Caution. Do not hold button for more than five seconds. It's not my fault. Toy Story 3. The conclusion to Toy Story, or at least it was until Toy Story 4 popped up, about growing up and focusing on the duties of life, but still having your imagination and being able to give that idea to others. It was a fantastic movie and it's probably among a lot of people's favorite Pixar film. It also got me very close to crying in the theater by the way. Plenty of people did cry on that day though. Anyways, with the recent Toy Story 4 releasing, I said, why not look back on Toy Story 3 and more specifically, the video game for it. The game featured two different modes that the development team thought of and decided to include them both as they felt that it would represent Toy Story pretty effectively. And today, I'll be looking at the Toy Story 3 video game and see just how good this idea was to have both of these game modes. Now with there being two game modes, there are two stories to this game. The regular story mode retells the events of Toy Story 3, explaining how the toys ended up at Bonnie's house. And they're also doing it through a board game, which is a little bit weird, but whatever. Basically, it's the same plot as the movie, but explained after the fact. It's about what you would expect, though it does add a few things and also takes away a few things. For one, some levels are made up in order to be a representation of the playtime that Bonnie had involving a witch that makes the room flooded with coffee that leads to a rocket ship in outer space, and later that same witch attacks a ghost town with explosive muffin creatures. I really wish I had that kind of creativity for my videos. Instead, I have a review series using a Denkin Rapa character going to multiple dimensions of cartoons and movies while being insulted by a nanite from Generator Rex that's supposed to have the personality of Bill Cipher from Gravity Falls. I really wish I had that kind of imagination. Also, remember that video game sequence at the beginning of Toy Story 2? Well, that was turned into a full-blown level, and some moments that are from Toy Story 2 are in this game as well, and that's actually playable. This game mode does take away the whole incinerator scene when the whole cast almost dies, which makes sense as that's a really, really big spoiler for that movie. Also, when I first saw that scene, I actually thought they were going to die. Pixar? I was almost traumatized as a kid. Don't do this to me. <laughs> the other story is through the toy box mode called Woody's Roundup, based off of the show that was shown off in Toy Story 2, though a lot of things from that aren't actually in this. Here you are a sheriff of a western town and you are supposed to make the town better by getting more people living there, adding more activities, and doing tax for the citizens. Basically, imagine Animal Crossing but without the massive crippling debt that you have to pay lingering over you. Having this be simple and vague is fine, especially given how the game mode works which I'll go more into later. But again, the story for both modes is good all around. I just wish that the rescue mission wasn't so short and for some reason Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head aren't in the game at all. They're actually not in either mode. If anyone knows the reason why, then let me know, but as far as I know, they're just not in there. Oh my goodness, the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions look really good. There's a good amount of detail for character models and environments everywhere, and cutscenes also don't look boring, and a good amount of them are animated to a pretty grand scale, which makes it look even better. For music, there is a lot. Just over 50 songs are in this game. A few of them are jingles, but the fact that there are this many songs, with a good amount of them being a decent length, and are also great in quality, is amazing. Even the entire song for You've Got a Friend in Me is in this game. In the toy box mode, whenever you unlock more toys, a TV ad appears and tells you about them including a Discord server called The Union, which you can go to with the link in the description. Most voice actors return for this game, the major different ones being Woody and Buzz because Jim Hanks does all the voice work for Woody that isn't in the movies, even the actual toy brand for Toy Story, and Mike McRae is basically the same thing but with Buzz. This is a consistent thing for Woody and Buzz so it's almost expected to be this way. The minor ones are Stinky Pete, Wheezy, and Peas in a Pod. Stinky Pete and Wheezy are very noticeable, but Peas in a Pod has so little lines to the point where you won't notice the difference. Overall, the voice work is really good, but those few differences are pretty noticeable. But it's nothing that brings down the entire cast, especially since almost everyone else returns anyways. For both game modes, you are able to play as Winnie Pride, Buzz Lightyear, and Jesse. She's the only one that doesn't have a last name, by the way. Now, though you can play as all of them, both game modes have different rules to them. 
In the story mode, you're able to switch between the three characters when the level allows it, and complete puzzles by using them together. What I mean by when the level allows it is that some levels only have one or two characters playable. The general gameplay is similar all around, with all characters having a tackle, a ground pound, and the ability to pick up and throw objects and characters, and can jump off of walls. However, each character has abilities that the others aren't able to perform. Woody can get to high or far away places using his wind-up string to swing forward and can also pull the object the string latches onto. Buzz throws the farthest out of everyone, and has a radical for throwing so you can be accurate. He can also glow in the dark. That doesn't really do anything for him though. It's just an aesthetic thing that the other characters don't have, because why would they? For the level based off of the Buzz game, he can shoot lasers and hover over gaps. Jesse can use a ninja spire jump to get onto smaller places. It's not given that name, but it's literally the same animation as Sly Cooper's, so I'm calling it that. Around the levels are a few objects that you can interact with. There are postcards, townspeople, and other objects which give extensions for Woody's roundup. There are also two capsules which you can get. Blue capsules are hints for progressing through some levels, and red capsules have tokens which you can use at Al's toy barn. At this location, you can redeem 10 tokens for a randomly selected hat, hair, or clothing piece for Woody's Roundup, and I'll get to that later. Here, you can also check up on the objects you need to find in order to unlock some of the toy box extensions and extras. And now it's time to talk about Woody's Roundup. As the sheriff, your job is to make the town better by completing missions for the townspeople and expanding areas. These missions are provided to you by actual Toy Story characters that exist, or by the smaller townspeople, which are basically Legos. There are two ways of getting money. The standard way is completing missions, like I already mentioned, but the other way is by completing gold stars, which are in-game achievements for doing certain actions. You're able to check your missions and gold star lists at any time, and even give yourself a pointer to where you need to go for some of the missions. You can't do that with any of the gold stars, though. Around all the locations are two capsules. Blue capsules are tips about things you can do in the overworld, and red capsules have customizable pieces for the Legos and aliens. There's also a miniature Owl's Toy Barn in this location where you can buy more toys like citizens, transportation, minigames, buildings, and areas, all of which gave you more missions. For some of the buildings, you can take a civilian to them and use the pieces that you've collected and change their appearance. For transportation, they all have their own little challenges which revolve around getting a fast time or doing an objective within a set amount of time. If you need to get to different areas even faster though, you can travel through the well system connecting them all. But of course, you have to unlock the area before you can actually go to it through the well. Now, the three characters don't have their special abilities in this mode, since I can imagine that if that was implemented, then a lot of areas would be cut off for certain characters and you wouldn't be able to play who you wanted in this mode. So instead, you get a lot of tools that you use for different purposes. The pickaxe can be used on gold chunks sticking out of the ground for money. The toolbox lets you customize how a building looks. You're able to change its walls, trim, windows, and add things to the yard, porch, sides, and roof when applicable. Pieces for these are also found in the route capsules that I mentioned earlier. The camera allows you to take pictures, which is important for the next item, the Pictomatic. This has a collection of images that you can recreate, which gives you special cutscenes and, of course, gold. There are also a bunch of weapons that you can use. Some just hit targets like the Pixar Ball and the Laser Gun, and others have special properties which do things like destroy certain objects, electrocute people, send aliens after them, turn them into butterflies or back from caterpillars. It's strange, to say the least. By the way, once you unlock more areas, you can change the overall world to a certain setting of the sky, such as day, night, creepy midnight, or bright afternoon. I'm making up the names for the last two, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention. When you collect all of Zerg's pieces in the story mode, you get the ability to play as Zerg in the toy box mode. On PS3. Don't know why he's exclusive for that version, but whatever. You can turn whatever character you're playing as into Zerg, and you now have access to his own set of missions and they're all revolving around destroying Buzz in some way. Zerg also has his Trigun and a custom vehicle to drive around in. In the story mode, there are multiple ways of solving some problems for missions, which promotes creativity. Even for the levels that only have one character, you do have to think a little bit sometimes in order to get through the levels and time yourself accordingly. This also gives a decent amount of emphasis on the trio of toys using their teamwork to solve problems and have their unique abilities mean something when it comes to completing the level and getting extras. I will admit though that the story mode is really short and can be beaten in about 2 hours. Maybe 3 if you're trying to get all the extras in each level. 
However, Woody's Roundup, in my opinion, well makes up for that with the amount of content that it provides. All the stuff that you can purchase leads into a load of missions. And speaking of which, even though there is so much stuff to do that ends up getting you money, on an average playthrough of it, you'll never be able to just flat out buy everything as soon as it's available. And it's mainly the different areas as they cost quite a bit of money, so getting more stuff feels more like you earned it instead of it just being given to you. There are so many activities that you can do that it honestly didn't feel like the story mode would ever end, which is a really good thing considering the type of game mode that this is. Most of the areas you unlock have their own level inside of them with their own red capsules to get. They have their own missions and other tasks that you can complete, and if you're wanting to go even more out of your way, you can complete the gold stars or pictomatic images for more gold. There's even special events that happen from time to time like enemies invading from the other areas so you have to take care of them, or bandits halting the stagecoach or robbing the bank. You can even watch buildings that you purchase be made before your eyes, or you can just go off and do whatever and the game will just let you know that the building's done. Plus, there are capsules that have decorations and costumes from other Pixar franchises like Monsters Inc., The Incredibles, Wally, -E, and Finding Nemo. And if you want to go even more out of your way, collecting a bunch of the stuff from the story mode also has its own contribution into unlocking stuff for the toy box mode. If the game was entirely this game mode, then I'd be perfectly fine with it. But the best part about this game mode though, is that you can be as corrupt of a sheriff as you want to be with no repercussions. You want to constantly throw people in the buildings and wells? You can do that. You want to paint the buildings and dress people however you want them to, no matter how dumb they look? You can do that. You want to rig a mayor election? There's literally a mission where you do that. You want to let the bandits rob the bank all the time and have enemies constantly going through and turning the townspeople into caterpillars, stone statues, and attempting to kill them, which would lead you and your entire town in crippling debt that doesn't ever need to be paid while you go along a skate park in a monster truck? You can do that. The possibilities really do feel endless in this game mode. However, notice how I didn't say anything about Zerg's gameplay for this mode. That's because it's not really all that expansive. By default, he has way less abilities than the other characters do, since he's not able to use any of the tools, and he can't even pick up and throw anything either. On top of that, he only has about 4 missions, which really underplays his exclusive aspect. Considering that he's supposed to be a major reason to convince you to get the PS3 version, I kinda expected more from him. Yeah, he has his own car, but again, he doesn't have much else. To be honest, the most fun I had was just blasting people with his gun in the town. It's just underwhelming compared to everything else you can do in the game. Most of the time in the toy box mode, there are loads between areas. I'm not sure if any other version has this, the Xbox 360 version might, but I'm fine with this because one, it's usually a short amount of time for loading. The only times where they're long is whenever you're going to and from car locations. And two, if it didn't do these loads, I feel like Woody's Roundup would drop the frame rate immensely, especially later on when you have a bunch of stuff happening at once. This game was a blast to go through. The gameplay everywhere is solid and everything feels like it's made to not only represent Toy Story 3, but also a good amount of aspects of Toy Story 2. And I feel like the main reason why was because they didn't have any Toy Story games for PS2, the first Xbox, and GameCube, so they had to do something to make up for that. I do wish that the story mode was a little bit longer and the potato heads would be in the game. Again, I still don't know why they're not. But with the large amount of time I spent enjoying the toy box mode, for the most part, I can say that well makes up for a good amount of the downsides in this game. This game supports the player having an imagination, and that's great since Toy Story 3 is all about growing up but still having that aspect within you. What's going on my fellow residents, it's me to Frozen Cavern, and thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. Now I actually played this game when I was younger and I remembered having a really fun time playing it, and now that I went through the game again, I really see why I enjoyed it. When I was playing the game, I'm not gonna lie, I had the stupidest grin on my face a good amount of the time, and it kept bringing back memories of when I was playing the game. So in terms of true nostalgia, this would probably have one of the highest spots compared to a good amount of the other games that I've reviewed. But if you guys had any experiences with this game, make sure you let me know in the comments below. 
But anyways, if you had not already, make sure you go down into the description below where all of my social medias are located. My Twitter, Instagram, Discord, and Facebook are all down there. And they are all ways of you guys being notified of whenever I upload another video, have updates for the channel, or just want to talk to me about whatever really. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more, as well as share this out with your friends and family. But until the next video, take care. I want you for